Welcome back to Bloomberg. Summer's not quite over yet, but fashion is now looking to spring. New York Fashion Week will be kicking off this week, where designers will be showing off their spring 2010 collections. The fashion and the retail industries are now banding together at what is a critical time for both industries. And Vogue's editor-in-chief, Anna Wintour, herself getting directly involved, headed to a Macy's in Queens, New York, to help jumpstart sales with Macy's CEO, Terry Lundgren. Uh, Terry now joins us from Macy's flagship store in Macy's Head Herald Square location uh, in a first on um, Bloomberg. Terry, how did you get Anna Wintour to go to Queens is the big question everyone wants to know the answer to. Uh, that's a good question, a uh, fair one. Actually, we started talking about this early on, and uh, it's really Anna's brainstorm uh, about getting customers uh, interested and excited about shopping again. And uh, we talked about it early, and, and I said, you know, Anna, I'm going to get you to go to our Queen store. And she said, great, I'll do it. And, and, and about a month later, we were still working through the details. Uh, and she said, Terry, I really am going to go to your Queen's Macy's store. And I said, that would be fantastic. So here it is a few days from now. She's going to go. Uh, she's already been for a prep session. She's excited about it. We're excited. And I think the whole market is going to be uh, a buzz when she's there. <laughs> well, this is really, you don't necessarily see the fashion world and the Main Street retail world coming together like this. But it's obviously in response to what sluggish spending we are still continuing to see this back to school season. Well, listen, we, we obviously work behind the scenes very closely together, and, uh, and that's on a daily basis. But what we're doing now is much more public, and what we're, we're all trying to do is come together focused on one thing, and that is uh, to create interest, to create excitement, and frankly, to create jobs. And, and uh, uh, retail is one of the largest uh, employers in the country, uh, and certainly throw in the entire fashion industry of, of designers and, and production and the like, uh, and we're gigantic in terms of an employer. So the only way that we can grow jobs is if we're actually selling products that we, that, uh, that, that we have in our stores and that the designers make. So we're trying to encourage, uh, you know, appropriate spending is, is the word that we're using at both Macy's and Bloomingdale's. And, and that's uh, where we're trying to get here. A little more interest, a little more excitement, a little more entertainment inside our stores. And, and retail is often the industry that people look to for supplemental income. And we're, we're talking about job growth starting now to be seen in the retail space. You were forced to cut about 7,000 jobs just a few months ago. Are you starting now to, to hire? Well, we will, uh, but that's traditional. Uh, as we get into the holiday season, we, we and other retailers clearly ramp up uh, and, and the primary additional jobs are on the selling floor uh, and behind the scenes of loading the inventory uh, onto the selling floor. So that's the, pro that's the, that's the jobs that we'll be uh, adding as we go forward into the holiday season. And depending on demand, well, that will determine just how many jobs we do add. And what is demand like right now? I know for back to school, the thought was it, it's getting less worse, sales still down uh, across the industry, but starting to see stabilization. Yeah, I think you're going to see that. Uh, we, we've been seeing some stabilization ourselves. Keep in mind that, like others, we have brought down our inventory fairly, fairly significantly. So there just is less to choose from for all retailers. We're trying to be more focused and have more of a, an, uh, an approach of, of being in stock on all the right items, but making sure that there's just not this excess of inventory that we all had going into the holiday season last year. So that's, gonna, that's going to, in some ways, influence the, the, the potential of overall sales. But clearly, you know, the good news is things seem to be now uh, in a position where we can plan for it. You know, we can see what's coming. We can plan our inventories. We can plan our sales. And we've got a much better handle now on where we're headed. Okay. Uh, Terry, if you would stay right there. Macy CEO Terry Lundgren joining us live. We're going to head to a quick commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be back in just about two minutes. More to come with Macy CEO. Welcome back to Bloomberg News. We're back live with Macy's CEO, Terry Lundgren, who joins us now from their flagship location in Herald Square. Uh, Terry, before the break, uh, you were talking about inventories being uh, in a better place than they were last year in terms of controls. When it comes to sourcing, uh, a number of retailers have gotten a lot smarter about being able to control costs on that front, uh, manufacturing costs. Are those being passed along to the consumer, or do you think that prices are going to be a little bit more stable than they were last holiday season? 
Yeah, they're definitely, you're, you're going to see great values on the floor. You see them now, uh, certainly in our case, uh, the values, uh, they have to be uh, obvious. And that's sort of the, the, the term we use around here is obvious value. Whether it's, whether it's at the, the price uh, that's on the ticket or, or if it's a, an additional promotion, the important message isn't is it on sale or not on sale. The important message is it has to be obvious value, regardless of what the price, price point is. Customers have to, to look at this product and say there's a, that, that is worth the price uh, of the ticket. And, and that's what I, want. I think we, we've made crystal clear that that message is throughout our buying organization. And I think that the entire fashion industry has embraced that idea in a very, very aggressive way this holiday season. In the last quarter, the weakest parts of the business were furniture, mattresses, and handbags at Macy's. Is that buying pattern continuing, or what are you seeing people purchase right now? Well, I think that what, what, you, what you're seeing people purchase, first of all, is, uh, is, is some of the, young, uh, the younger products are, are starting to work. The shoe business is, is, is working. Uh, jewelry has been mentioned, and that, that business has been good. So there's been a number of uh, gift-oriented as well as self-purchased products uh, that have been doing, doing well. The big ticket items, such as, uh, as furniture, as we've talked about, has been very often connected to you buy a new home, you, 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 you add new furniture, or you remodel a home, you you update your furniture, and, and since those, mar those businesses had, had slowed down, I, I certainly think there's a relationship there. But as those transactions begin to happen, again, I, I know at lower value, but as they begin to, to happen of housing sales uh, start to accelerate at these good values that are out there today, I think you'll start to see the big ticket business return as well. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Terry Lundgren, Macy CEO, joining us live uh, from their Herald Square location. Fashion's Night Out kicks off on the 10th at a Macy's in Queens. Uh, stay tuned for more on that front.